Okay, we're just going to do a quick video. David here from Fishtails Fly Shop in Calgary, and I just want to quickly explain how you use your technology in your hands that pretty much everybody has and be able to use the AB Rivers app, the Alberta Rivers app that the government provides, and how to interpret the data. And the rest of this will be on the computer. So, this is the first time trying this, but let's see how it goes. I wanted to do a video on how and what type of information you can get from the Alberta Rivers app that the government provides for free that you can download onto your phone and it gives you so much information that can be extremely helpful especially now with runoff and snow melt and uh, spring storms to tell you sort of where is good and where is not good as far as water conditions and the information is very up to date. Uh, it's about every 15 minutes that the stations that record data uh, let you know. So you can tell if a storm has blown out a river or not. So this is extremely useful. We get a lot of info, a lot of questions about this in the shop. And so I figured that the best way to do this was a video uh, to show you sort of briefly the information you can get from this. The two critical parts of information uh, that will kind of break into chapters sort of thing will be snow data which are the snowflake looking uh, icons that you can click on that gives you the snowpack information and now is an interesting time because of course it's melting and then all of these other dots are the flow station data that you can get and over on here you can just click that you want the snow information and the rivers and lakes information and it's the same as on your phone it just it gets displayed a little bit differently so we'll cover that in the next chapters here is obviously for on your phone download the app onto your phone and then sort of set it up and again uh, to get the information that you want just make sure that you have the rivers and lakes and the snowpack data clicked and then you can start to zoom in to areas that you're interested in and actually bookmark them or put them on your favorites list so that you can then just look at a list and again on your phone it displays a little bit differently but my favorites list now does show the stations that I have marked so that I can just very easily click on them and get that information immediately. On your phone, it just shows up as a list sort of separate over here and uh, you can then look at it. So when this star is whited out, that means that you have highlighted that station and it will show up on your favorites list. You can see it's black, but when you click on it, it will go white and that puts it on your favorites list on the phone and the link is here this AB Rivers and so when you click in it synchronizes the data to get it up to date and then here is the quickly the list of sites that I have put as my favorites and it makes it really simple to very quickly check the places that you want to check so again that's what it looks like on your phone that on here that the lines are actually designed to show you the watershed. So if you look at these black lines here, that designates the watershed. So the Bow River watershed starts up here and is all of this. The Old Man River watershed is all of this here. So that's a good sort of idea of what to help you with as far as how big the watershed is and where to look uh, on here. So when we look at a site for the snow data, for example, after you've got it all set up, this one here, it's in the Bow River watershed, but it's very, very close to the uh, upper Old Man and Livingston watersheds here. So really you can use the snow data from here to help you see what's going on in the upper Old Man as well, because it's literally just on the other side of the mountain. So not a big deal to check this one out. And I have that one marked. So you can use that to help you do both when they're on the border like that. So you can see in the Bow River watershed, there's 
all of these different stations here that fall in the Bow River watershed as far as what they are. So that's sunshine, and this is a good one to use to show you what the information means. So right away, you can see in here that at the moment, there's 185.22 mm's. Well, what does that mean? That doesn't mean that there's 185 millimeters of snow. That means that there's 185 millimeters of water in the snow. Uh, so when they melt down the snow, it comes up with that much water uh, in the snow because the spring snow is way, way heavier and wetter than the winter snow in the middle of January when it's minus 20, which is light and fluffy, which really doesn't give us much water. So that's why these charts, when you look at them, they change so much in the spring. So the, the primary chart is this one, and that gives you the big picture of what's happening. So last year is this red marker, and as you can see, we had a bit of a lower snowpack last year at this particular station. And this has been being recorded for many, many years. And so the, the average obviously is right in the middle of the gray area. So that would be exactly average. And then to get the upper and the lower parts, what they do is they take the 50% of the highest numbers, average those, that gives you the upper line. They take 50% of the lowest numbers and average those, and that gives you this. So this gives you the sort of broad range of averages over the long history of recording the data. So this year you can see that we were on the high side of the averages and got even higher as we got into the end of April, beginning of May, and this very quickly melts as you can see down here. So what this sort of tells you is that as of today, uh, getting to be into the third week of June here, that we are very much uh, on the average side, slightly high at this particular station of snow melt for this time of year. So if we then go and look at a different station up here, and we look at this graph of Skokie Lodge, so it's also in the upper bow, but it's also very close, as you can see, it's very close to the Red Deer River watershed, so we can kind of use it for both. And you can see it looks like a very different graph. So we were well above average in the snow for this year, but it melted very quickly because it's a different station. And now this particular station has, for all intents and purposes, no snow left. So we are down and that snow in that area is finished. So it's quite different than the sunshine one. So this gives you some ideas of sort of how to look at this. And again, low average, high average so we're we we were on the high side of average pretty much the whole winter and down to here and we look at the old man river watershed here's highway three here is a station at racehorse creek and as you can see that the graph of racehorse creek is exactly average for this whole last part and the snow at that station is gone so now we just have to deal with rain storms and stuff that affect the river because the snow is gone from there versus if you look on the south side this is the Gardner Creek area which is a tributary into the castle system and it's literally the same so very high snowpack but melted very quickly and literally finished melting at exactly average basically is what it's telling us low data which for the fishing side of things is definitely what we spend most of our time on. So here's a couple of stations in the Banff area, and this is the one for Banff. And when we look at this graph, again, same exact thing as the snow data. So this, you can see exactly when we got hot and when we've had our storms, because this is the big picture data here. And you can see there's the big storm we had back at the beginning of June and it got hot and then the same thing just sort of last week. And again, the same thing now, we're getting warm and we're starting to melt. So this is the big picture of what's happening on the Banff station on the Bow River. Whereas when you look at the chart, 
this is the chart that gives you the very specific numbers for the whole time period. So this is as of 10 o'clock this morning and it's 11.15. So that information is only an hour and 15 minutes old. So really you can't ask for any better information than what this is giving you. So this gives you the what's happening right now. This one gives you what the past week looks like. So this, uh, as you can see, we were literally exactly average at about 125 cubic meters per second uh, here just a few days ago. And now that we were getting warm again, lo and behold, the snow starts to melt and the river goes up. So therefore the bow is going up and probably isn't that great of fishing conditions uh, at the moment because it's getting to be above our long-term averages. So this is the kind of information that you can use on any creek to show you what's happening. So you've got the three pieces of information here. The very specific data in the chart, the what's happening the week that's, that zooms in on that graph to make it a little easier to read, and the big picture of what happens throughout the year. So this gives you sort of the, the big picture uh, historical averages scenario. Watershed is a big watershed. It has multiple rivers feeding it, the Kananaskis and the Ghost system and the Highwood system and the Sheep system and the Elbow system. And so for us that fish the lower bow, uh, this station that's in Calgary here, this gives you the information of how much water there is here. So you can see that it's uh, gone through a couple of reservoirs and they manage those reservoirs for various purposes. And you can see that there's a lot more water here than there was in Banff by almost 100 cubic meters per second. So it's 30 plus percent larger the river here. And again, same thing, you can get the very specific information and you can actually see when the storms hit and you can get the week. So there's this week, so you can kind of see some of the pulses of the river. And yes, they managed the water here and they dropped it for whatever reason in the middle here. But basically we're on the very high side of average for most of this last week and now we're above, above the long-term averages at the moment. And then when you look at the big picture, there's sort of what's happening this year. And again, you can see our storms going through and that sort of mirrors what happens up in Banff. And generally when we see the water go up in Banff, upstream there, it takes about two to three days, kind of depending on the speed of the water for the high water in Banff to reach us here in Calgary. So when we have a big storm in Banff, but not in Calgary, you can count on a couple of days before that actually makes its way through the system and then hits here in Calgary. Now this doesn't tell the whole story because this particular station is above where the water starts to get taken out for the irrigation. So this is an irrigation station here and when you look at this chart you can see this is the water that they take off for the Western Irrigation District and it's basically stays up in this higher average range most of the time so they're taking 10 to 12 cubic meters of water every day all the time uh, and that's just sort of the average for there so that water gets taken out of the bow but then of course the elbow comes in and adds its water in here and as we move down there's no other stations on the bow until you hit Cars Land. So there's a lot of sort of missing information because Fish Creek is here, uh, the Highwood is here, so there's a lot of missing information on the bow. So we find that a useful piece of information that a lot of people have only sort of just figured out in this last little bit is if I go over here and on the app on your phone it's the same thing, see this little water tap? If you click it, there is other stations that show up. So if you look here now, this particular station is right near the Deerfoot Extender Bridge below Fish Creek Park. And so when I click on it, it's now giving us different information and this particular one. So you can see that the natural flow is 350 
cubic meters per second. So that's noticeably different than the one up at Calgary because this now takes into, a, into account uh, the Elbow River coming in, Fish Creek coming in, the water that leaves uh, at the Western Irrigation District. So this particular site is extremely useful to have a much better idea of what's happening on the lower bow as opposed to uh, the Calgary station itself. So again, it's just clicking on or touching the water tap one and it gives you this extra station that's here that's very helpful uh, and has a little bit better picture of what's happening. The smaller watersheds and the mountain streams where people fish, uh, this can really tell you if it's worth a trip to drive a couple three hours to head out to fish on some of the mountain streams at this time of the year. Literally we've just opened ones up and uh, it's not great to show up and find out that the river is completely blown. Uh, because of high water from storms or uh, snow melt that still is coming. So we'll just use the crow's nest here to look at this and again there's a couple of stations. There's Gold Creek and also Frank itself. And so this is the crow's nest river at Frank and when we look at the big picture it's exactly average for this time of year. So that tells you that it's probably pretty good. Whereas last week at the or two weeks ago at the beginning of June and if you had looked at this and go oh we're way above normal uh, so it's probably not worth the trip to go down and fish a river when the information is telling me that the river is way way above normal whereas right now we're exactly normal so that's a really good scenario and again if you want to look at the week sort of highlighted a little better so here is just this past week and literally it's flowing in that exactly perfectly normal scenario. So that's very useful information to help figure that type of scenario out. Whereas if we go and look at here, so here is Racehorse Creek for example, and Racehorse Creek information, it's now showing us that for this time of year, Racehorse Creek is normal. So that is very helpful, whereas uh, before, right at opener, there was the big storms and that lasts for a few days. So I don't know if that storm will show up on the week's chart. Not quite. So you can see it just starting to come down from normal off this past week and that's right when it opened up. So it would have been high and fast uh, right on that season opener day. So you can use these pieces of information to help you plan and go from there. So hopefully you can find this information useful. And again, you can look for anywhere in the province. There's hundreds of spots and it really does make a difference as to be able to plan your days and go and you can look at snowpack for this time of year to see how we're doing with that and how much it's melted and the river flow. And you, there's enough river flow information there that you can literally find out if a storm has come through the area and you can look at that data and see if it's worth going on that two hour drive to that spot uh, or not. So hopefully you found that useful and good luck with the app and better luck fishing.